Hello everyone, today I'll be discussing about the case Salomon vs. Salomon and Company Limited, which is commonly known as Salomon vs. Salomon. So, Salomon vs. Salomon is one of the most famous cases of company law and also the landmark and leading cases of company law, which basically dealt with the structure and fundamental constructions of company laws. Today I will be discussing about the facts, issues, judgment of this case. Also I will be discussing about the separate legal personality as well. As we know company is actually a separate legal entity and Salomon vs. Salomon Company Limited determined that fact. So let's start. Separate legal personality or the SLP is the basic tenet on which company law is premised. Establishing the foundation of how a company exists and functions, it is perceived as perhaps the most profound and steady rule of corporate jurisprudence. Contrastingly, the rule of SLP has experienced much turbulence historically and is one of the most litigated aspects within the across jurisdictions. Nonetheless, the principle established in the epic case of Salomon vs. Salomon is still much prevalent and is conventionally celebrated as forming the core of not only the English company law but of the universal commercial law regime. So, the fact of the case was, Salomon transferred his business of wood making initially run as a sole proprietorship to a company, Salomon Limited, incorporated with members comprising of himself and his family. The price for such transfer was paid to Salomon by way of shares and debentures having a floating charge on the assets of the company later when the company's business failed and it went into liquidation Salomon's right of recovery which was secured through floating charge against the debentures stood a prior to the claims of unsecured creditors who would thus have recovered nothing from the liquidation proceeds to avoid such alleged unjust exclusion, the liquidator on behalf of the unsecured creditors alleged that the company was sham, was essentially an agent of Salomon and therefore Salomon being the principal was personally liable for its debt. In other words, the liquidator sought to overlook the separate personality of Salomon Limited distinct from its member Salomon so as to make Salomon personally liable for the company's state as if he continued to conduct the business as a sole trader. So now we'll talk about the issue of this case. The issue was the case concerned claims of certain unsecured creditors in the liquidation process of Salomon Limited a company in which Salomon was the majority shareholder and accordingly we so was sought to be made personally liable for the company's debt. Hence, the issue was whether regardless of the separate legal identity of a company, a shareholder or the controller could be held liable for its debt and over above the capital contribution so as to expose such member to unlimited personal liability. Now let's talk about the rule or the decision of the court. The court of appeal declaring the company to be a myth reasoned that Salomon had incorporated the company contrary to the true intent of the then Companies Act 1862 and that the latter had conducted the business as an agent of Salomon, 
who should therefore be responsible for the debt incurred in the course of such agency. The House of Lords, however, upon appeal, reversed the above ruling and unanimously held that, as the company was duly incorporated, it is an independent person with its rights and liabilities appropriate to itself, and that the motives of those who took part in the promotion of the company are absolutely irrelevant in discussing what those rights and liabilities are. Thus, the legal fiction of corporate bail between the company and its owner's controllers was firmly created by the Salomon case. So that's why we can say that Salomon versus Salomon is the leading case and the constructed case of company loss. So that's all for today and I hope uh, this case review will help you a lot and if it is then please do subscribe, comment, share and thanks for watching. Have a nice day ahead of you.